Hey guys, it's Alex and welcome to the Geeks Table. Today we are talking about Google Pixel phones. We all know that they produce amazing photos, but their video capabilities have always been somewhat neglected. So today we're going to fix that. Some time ago I've compared internal stabilization of the iPhone 15 Pro versus a DJI Osmo Mobile 6 gimbal. The result was, well, you better watch it yourself. I'll put a link into the description and also it will be somewhere over here. So today I'm repeating this experiment, but this time I'll be using the Pixel 9 Pro XL, Pixel 8 Pro and Pixel 7. And I'll compare their stabilization with this gimbal, Zhuyun Cinepia CQ5. But more on that later. So out of the box, each of these phones have four stabilization modes. Locked, Standard, Active and Pan. Let's have a look at each one of them. The locked mode basically does a slight crop of the frame and compares every frame with the previous one, trying to keep them as similar as possible. It understands that the building is unlikely to move, so it tries to maintain its position in the frame. There are two modes, 2x and 5x, where 2x is still quite wide, so you can hardly see any shakes. It has a lot of real estate to work with, so it's fine. But when we switch to 5x, we'll immediately see the difference. The frame is much tighter, so the phone has quite hard time stabilizing the video. The standard mode is what's turned on by default in every pixel, and it's a combination of hardware image stabilization and software algorithms. And I must say it does a pretty good job. I also have to say though that it has some imperfections, like image bending or shakiness when you're walking, but it's still a good mode for everyday use. The active mode is good for some fast movements like running, but it's limited to Full HD 30fps and that really shows. It has two modes, 1x, which is a crop of ultra-wide lens and double x, which is a crop of the main lens. And while it's mainly doing a good job, sometimes I see that it becomes a bit sticky. It tries to keep the frame stable, but at a cost of losing the main subject. And it takes some time for it to move. And last but not least, the pan mode. You have to go to a separate tab for it to work, and the reason is that it's not your usual video mode here. It shoots in 60 frames per second, but produces a 30 frames per second video with a 50% slowdown. The algorithm focuses on a smooth pan transition, so you get a nice looking image, but with no sound. I must say that all in all it looks nice, but not perfect. Alright, so now we know the modes that the Pixel phones offer. But how do they stack up against each other? Do we have any year-to-year -year improvement? Let's find out. In the locked mode, the Pixel 9 Pro XL is a bit better than the others. It's not a day and night difference, but here and there you can notice Pixel 8 Pro being more shaky. As for the Pixel 7, lack of the telephoto camera definitely shows, so the 2x crop looks worse than on the other two. And when we move to the 5x crop, the difference becomes even more noticeable. No matter how stable Pixel 7 would be, I'm not using that video anyway. So I believe Pixel 7a, 8 and 8a would be somewhat similar in this regard. In the standard mode, I barely could see any differences between the models. And actually that's a good thing. It means that if your needs are casual, then even the Pixel 7 would have you covered. Give yourself a few seconds to look at each of these videos separately. I would say that each of them is a great result for an Android phone. The active mode works similar between all three models, and honestly, I would have used any of those videos. Sadly, as I've said before, the active mode may struggle to keep the main subject in the frame. And you may notice there is quite a delay followed by a harsh movement when it tries to catch up with the object. Also, it produces artifacts on sharp turns when the subject is not moving along a straight line. And when we move from 1x mode to 2x mode, the quality drops dramatically. And it becomes even more challenging to keep the subject in the frame. In the pan mode, the Pixel 9 Pro XL gives the most smooth result. 8 Pro looks like it sticks to one frame, then rushes forward to the other one, then rushes forward to the next one, and so on and so on. It doesn't happen all the time though. Sometimes all three phones are on par, and even Pixel 9 Pro XL can have some imperfections. A funny thing happened when I shot a pan video diagonally. 
The algorithms of older phones didn't expect that and they were struggling to understand whether I moved the phone vertically or horizontally. The Pixel 9 Pro XL, on the other hand, had no problems with that at all. All right, so this is the situation we have to deal with. It's not bad, but it's not great either. So how do we improve the stabilization? Well, by using a gimbal. And today, as I've said, I'll be using Zhuyun Cinepia CQ5. At a glance, it looks like a pretty standard gimbal with a detachable tripod at the bottom and a selfie stick hidden in the handle. It's a pretty light gimbal with a nice grip. It has a few buttons over here with the digital joystick and the zoom wheel. And of course, it has a folding handle where you put your phone. And yes, of course, it has AI. If you wish to use AI, you have to attach this camera module to the handle of the gimbal. So this small camera may react to your gestures and be like a virtual remote control for your gimbal. But I'm not going to use it today. I'll be using just the gimbal itself. So here we can see three combinations. Just a phone in locked mode, a phone on a gimbal in the locked mode, and also a phone on a gimbal with no internal stabilization of the phone. To me, the first one is stable enough already, so using a gimbal here feels redundant. However, you are losing some image quality there and it does a slight crop. So if that bugs you, the gimbal is your choice because it doesn't have those disadvantages. With the standard mode, it gets even more interesting. All three examples are comparable, but if you look carefully, you'll notice that the third one is a bit less stable. It's not a huge difference, but it's there. What surprises me is that we've been taught to disable the software stabilization whenever we use a gimbal, because they might be conflicting with each other, resulting in some artifacts. But in this case, the best result is actually the combination of the two. And that's a nice surprise. Let's switch to the active mode, and here I have the same impression. The best result is in the middle, with a combination of the gimbal and the active mode of the phone. I've also noticed that in general, Zhuyun Cinepia CQ5 is not doing a good job when running, even though I've set up the follow mode. All in all, I think it would have been better if I used a combination of the gimbal and the standard mode. In that case, I could even preserve the image quality. And last but not least, the pan mode. Again, all the results are comparable. But if you look at the third one, in that case, I actually hold my hand at the same position and use the joystick to pan from left to right. And to me, that's the best of the three, because not only it preserves the skyline level, but also the panning speed is persistent. So again, the gimbal was a nice improvement. Since we've started exploring gimbal's capabilities, let's have a look at a few more modes, and the next one is Panorama. The idea is that you install their app, and it will take nine photos and stitch them together. Unfortunately, the app is not quite happy to work with the Pixel phones, because it has to refocus and reset the settings after every shot of the panorama. So I ended up with this photo, with a part of it completely blurred out. And with this one, with each part of the sky to be of a different color. So in this case, I was happy to switch to the default camera and do the panorama manually. The new Pixel 9 Pro XL has a different UI, which I find more appealing. And here is the result. Much better, isn't it? Every modern gimbal has some tracking features, and Zhuyun Cinepia CQ5 is no exception. In the previous experiments, I had some trouble losing the object while walking and running, so I thought it would be a good idea to use the tracking. Unfortunately, it didn't work as I expected. The video became even more shaky because the algorithm had to compensate my hand movements and the object movements at the same time. Oh, and also I guess you've noticed already that you shouldn't use the Gimbal's app to shoot videos. At least on the Pixel phones. It didn't work quite well with walking, so just to prove my theory, I decided to give it one more run. And well, the good part is that the tracked object is always in the frame, I'll give it that but we no longer talk about the stable video and that kind of defeats the whole purpose. So the tracking feature is nice only when the gimbal is stationary. All right, enough with the tracking, let's move to the zoom capabilities. You can zoom with the wheel on the handle, but that feature only works in its own app and for some reason it doesn't do the lens switching. So I could do only digital zoom with quite questionable quality. So I'll pass on that. So what can I say? 
Some examples really surprised me, especially the tandem of the gimbal stabilization working together with the internal stabilization. But to be honest, the stabilization of the phones is not a problem. The action mode, the locked mode, the pan mode, the standard mode, they work fine. The stabilization is fine. The problem is that when you start using them, most of them probably except the standard mode, the picture quality degrades dramatically. And that's the main problem of these phones. So if that bugs you, a gimbal is a great solution. Zhiyun Cinepia CQ5 is okay, but the app needs a lot of improvement. It has AI printed on its handle, yet it's unable to color match 9 photos in a panorama. So I'm pretty sure that Zhiyun can do better and I'm really looking forward to it. I hope this video was useful for you and if it was, please hit a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. It's been Alex and see you at the Geeks Table. Bye-bye.